Let's dive into getting started with online ordering. We are configuring our Toast online ordering page, order.toastapp.com, attached to our business. This is how guests can place orders online and it's linked to our Toast account. So all of these settings and how we configure it happens in Toast Web. If you notice on our online ordering page, most of this is menus. Most of what we're seeing on here is menu items, is menu groups, is our descriptions, our images, our prices. When we click on an item, any modifiers that are in here, special instructions, this is all going to be menu settings. So we need to establish our menu before we get into any of the other settings for online ordering. So in Toast Web, we're going to jump into menus and into menu manager. Can I just use my existing menu for online ordering? Sure, you absolutely can. However, we're talking about optimizing online ordering, not really using the stuff that we've already created. A menu for in-store usage is optimized for in-store. We want to optimize a menu for online ordering. It is connected to our other menus. It is quick to build from my menu screen. I'm able to see all my menus that I've built so far. We recommend to add a new menu for online ordering specifically. So I'm gonna type in my new menu name and name it new online ordering menu. Creating a new menu is that easy. Then from here, we can add in menu groups. Groups allow us to organize our items. If we take a look here, what appears first? This is prime real estate. Think about a guest that's on their phone that's ordering. They're probably not gonna scroll through our entire menu. They're looking at the top and they're gonna jump down to specific items that look good to them. And this first area here is really important. We recommend creating a menu group for featured items, for chef favorites. We're gonna type that in and say staff favorites. What items does this group entail? That's entirely up to us. We can use existing items that I've already built. By typing in mozzarella sticks, I can immediately take it and plug it into this menu. It's the same mozzarella sticks in my other menu. It's connected. That's gonna be really good for reporting. Brock Pretty Fried Chicken Sandwich, plug it in. It's the same thing. When we have this online ordering menu, we wanna make sure it's only offered online. So we can click into this menu where we see this advanced options here. So I'm gonna use the expand button to make it a little bit easier to look at. The very bottom, there's a setting called channel visibility that we can choose and adjust where this appears. So if we don't want it in store, turn off POS, turn off kiosk and order and pay settings. So visibility can be set at the menu level it's at the group level, we can even set it at item levels if certain items are only available online. A couple of things that we need to think about with our items. Number one, our image and descriptions. People are not going to place those orders as much if they can't see how delicious it is. Even if we don't have a professional photographer, all of us probably have some sort of smartphone that has a pretty good camera on it. As the food is coming out, take pictures of it and upload it here. We also want to make sure there's a description because all of these things are going to be visible very easily on our online ordering page. If we are including bar items or drinks on our online ordering page, I know that's available in some areas, we can mark if this item includes alcohol or not, which we definitely want to do for alcoholic beverages. That is going to make sure that our terms are represented when folks are placing these orders online. Now I'm going to add in an item here, potato skins. And if we scroll down, we can see the potato skins just cost $7 flat. If I want to leverage menu specific price, I can click on learn about other pricing strategies and jump in to set it up. Now from here, we have an option to choose menu specific price. Normally it's $7. If it's on our online ordering menu, we upcharge it to $9. We gotta account for packaging. We gotta account for bags. Let's discuss 
other settings that we have to configure when we're considering our online ordering page, such as our schedule for online ordering and setting our order volume. When someone navigates to our page and they wanna select and place an order, when can they schedule that pickup? When can they schedule that time for delivery? How long is it gonna take? These are things that we have to consider and they're all gonna be found within our takeout and delivery settings. So at the very top of this page, we have Toast Online Ordering Settings. So this is where we toggle the module on or off. If we're still configuring our menu, maybe we want to leave this off and then turn it on once we're ready. We can also snooze it for kind of breaks in the day if we're getting really swamped. We're going to see takeout and delivery quote times. That is how long it's going to take for the guest order to be in their hands. If we're getting really swamped, we can add delays onto this. So we can say, hey, expect to wait about 10 more minutes for your takeout order. We can do the same with delivery. We'll also notice that we can turn on delivery here. We have two options. We can either use our own delivery drivers or we can use Toast Delivery Services, which essentially is going to leverage Uber Direct and DoorDash Drive drivers. Quote times are, again, just how long we're quoting the customer from order placement to time in hand. We have a few quote time strategies that we can use to approximate the correct time. Manual means ask yourself, how long is it typically going to take from an order coming in to being ready for the guest? Meaning it's probably going to take about 15 minutes for a takeout order. Delivery, 45 minutes. If we need to add delays, that's what the above section was for. We can also automate some of these using things like order price. Order price allows us to set the baseline, but if an order comes in and it's a really high cost, like 150 bucks, that probably means there's a lot of items in the order. And if there's a lot of items, it's gonna take us longer to prep. So we can automatically add more expected time. We can also choose kitchen capacity. We set the base quote time, we set our order price rules, but we also get our kitchen capacity adjustment. This allows us to say in a 15 minute period, how many orders can we handle and how many items can we handle? It's either or. So in this case, if we are getting 10 orders in 15 minutes, that's our maximum. If we get 11 or more orders, 15 minutes automatically gets tacked on. This is simply for online orders or items. This does not take into consideration normal in-house orders. So we need to adjust this and consider how many online orders on top of our standard in-house orders can we accept or have capacity for. And then there's also Smart Quote, which once it uses AI to gather data on how long it takes for us to fulfill orders. So that is a good way to automate the process of quote time setting. The last thing that we'll cover in this section is simply our online ordering hours. And we can customize them for takeout and we can customize them for first party delivery as well. They can be two separate times. Use the edit pencil to adjust when we're open, when we're closed. Maybe we wanna consider that our end times are going to be a little bit earlier than our actual store closing. That way we don't get swamped at the end of the day for our kitchen as we're trying to clean things up. There is a setting for us that says we can either accept orders all the way up to closing or closing time minus the prep time. That prep time is the quote time we just showed. And then always be proactive and set overrides. That's our schedule for 90% of the days of the week. Overrides are for the other 10% of adjustments and hours. If we have an event that's going on, if we are off for a holiday, and then always if we make adjustments, save and to make sure they take effect, publish. These ones are more background settings, but they're really important. There is an entire setup page dedicated to online ordering configurations right next to related settings here. We're not going to go through all of the settings here today, but we are going to go through a few important ones. The first one that I want to highlight is approvals. Our first option for this is that we can manually approve these orders, meaning someone has to navigate to a Toast device in store and approve an online Online order 
to make sure it gets fired to the kitchen. Sending orders directly to the kitchen is the polar opposite of that. It just means whenever an online order is placed, automatically fired to the kitchen. The happy medium between those is using rules. These rules are four unique rules that allow us to set thresholds for when we may need to manually approve an order. So if an order for delivery doesn't meet the $5 minimum, it's like a $3 delivery order, maybe that's gonna end up costing us more than it is giving us sales. So at the end of the day, maybe we need to manually approve those or we can reject those entirely. If we accept ahead of time scheduling, this is where scheduling comes into play. Some of us may just wanna enable no all orders will be fulfilled as soon as possible. If we want to offer scheduling though, we can say yes. And then we can either abide by the default 14 days or you can customize it. Maybe only a week in advance. Something that goes hand in hand with scheduled orders is minimum lead times. How far in advance do we need an order to make it? Think of custom cakes, bakeries. We usually need to have orders in in advance. So our takeout minimum lead time, maybe it's a day in advance, 24 hours hours. We can have a separate one for delivery if we need. Dining options are really just ways for us to confirm that we're collecting all the proper customer information at checkout. Takeout, we collect their contact information. Curbside, we collect their vehicle make and model. And then delivery, we obviously are going to collect their address. Dining options are the settings that drive that. So just make sure to choose the appropriate option in the dropdown, and then we're set. From here, we're gonna see some other settings like server selection and revenue center. Server selection means this is the server that is assigned to all of our online ordering checks. A lot of times this isn't a real user. In fact, usually we recommend using a placeholder user like default online ordering. Revenue centers allow us to track sales. So we can clearly filter in our sales reports how much is coming in from online ordering. And then special requests are those customizable modifiers that guests can place when they are ordering. Lastly is how guests are going to pay for these orders. So if there's a delivery order, can a guest pay with cash when the driver comes to the door or no? For a takeout order, can someone pay for the order in store when they come to pick it up or when they place it online? All of these features, again, are important functions of how online ordering works, but aren't necessarily front and center. We still have to consider them. We still have to accommodate them. So make sure to walk through this page and adjust settings as needed. And always remember to press save. This one is all around branding and customization and make it look not like a toast online ordering page, make it look like our online ordering page. We're gonna go back to takeout and delivery. There's a whole section dedicated to branding and customization. Now notice I have a little message here that says digital storefront essentials. Essentials is kind of the baseline. If we have Pro, that gives us a whole ton of customization. If we have the storefront essentials, which we're gonna go through today, that is less options, but still we're gonna be able to customize things. The Just the structure of the page is pretty set in place if we have essentials. So we're gonna click into the branding and customization section. And this is where we're gonna configure things like our brand color, our logo, our banner image. Now, key thing here when we're uploading these, they should be the same size or following the rules of the sizing here. Both of these are going to help ensure that our images aren't blurry and that they load quickly on the page. If they're too big, they take too long to load. We can also customize our fonts even with our standard essential packages. We can upload custom fonts. We can change font colors as needed. And then we also, as we scroll down, can change the menu page configuration, which is really just our online ordering page. We can customize our footers. We can add our social media links. We can update location hours or names of our locations. This by default is just gonna pull what's in our tow system, but this can be updated specifically for online if we'd like. Add in spotlight banners, add in promo codes. The last thing that I wanna talk through, we need people to see where the online ordering page is. They need to get access to it. One of the best ways to get access to it is by sharing out the link. Where we saw our online ordering set up a little bit earlier, there's also an area for restaurant info. It contains a lot of our business's information, and it also contains our public links. 
that online ordering link, that's how we share it out with our guests. As long as guests have access to this link, they're going to be able to place online orders. We can download the QR code and use that in other materials like our email marketing, make stickers, post it around our restaurant. So we need to create buttons for this page on our website. We need to create options for our QR code and get this link out there so that people get traffic to the site, place orders, and that's how we're going to really find the benefits of online ordering.